So let's assume that you need to update your transaction numbers, such as the sales order number, the invoice number, the vendor bill, what, whatever it is, the purchase order number that you create. And uh, NetSuite is not letting you do this. So in order to do that, uh, let's say you want to set one order number in, that includes the date, maybe the sales rep ID, or maybe even uh, a department code within it. So you won't be able to do this here. What you need to do is go to setup. Uh, first of all, you, you're going to go to company and general preferences. You're going to ensure that the show transaction numbering setup is uh, ticked off first. It must not be ticked. Okay. Once that's done, you can go to setup, company, auto generated numbers. When you do that and you go to document numbers, you'll be able to see the allow override. Okay, so if I look for the sales order here below and I click on allow override and I click on save, when I go back to my sales order and I refresh the page, the order number reference is now open for edition. This means that you can now script on this and update it, uh, but it also means that users can change this. Of course, you can use a workflow to decide who has the ability to modify this field and who doesn't, but at least you can now work on this to update it as you need to. Now, the second tip I have for you is how to create a very specific prefix by subsidiary and a number count by subsidiary. So let's say your orders from subsidiary one will start with one, but it will be like sub one, zero, zero, one. And then for subsidiary two, it will be sub two, zero, zero, one. So each subsidiary will have its own numbering sequence. To do this, you have to go to your uh, setup uh, company auto-generated numbers. You're going to go to your document numbers again, and then you're going to click on the right um, transaction that you want to set this on. You're going to click on use subsidiary. What that means is when you click on this, NetSuite will look at the subsidiary prefix you used on the subsidiary record itself. So for example, when I look at the subsidiary for Africa, if I view this, you will see here that the, it has a document number prefix that's available for entry. Now I could edit this and I could say that uh, this uh, document number prefix would be AFR, for example, which means that every time there will be a transaction and a sequence and on the numbering I've set it to use the subsidiary prefix, this is what it's going to be looking at. Okay, that's uh, another tip. Uh, and uh, the third tip is if you go back to your auto generated number, is that you have to make sure that whenever you do these changes, you do them on the sandbox first because you already have a sequence number and some people might want to change this to whatever it is they need it to be. So you might have, for example, if you're using a prefix now that you were not using before, Maybe the historical transaction are not going to be uh, having this uh, prefix and it's only based on the new invoices you're going to create that they're going to appear. So you have to make sure that whatever you do, you test it on the sandbox first before deciding to release it on the live environment. So I hope this made sense to you today. And if so, don't forget to leave a like or subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video about NetSuite tips and tricks. Thank you and goodbye.